Welcome back to the monthly portfolio update. I hope you'll find the information in this video useful, but disclaimer, please note that this is not investing advice. It's just my portfolio as it stands on Monday, April 1st, and it can change at any time without previous notification. Following an investment strategy without doing the work yourself is almost guaranteed to result in losses. So please be careful since it's your responsibility to do your own research before investing. At the end of the video, in the bonus section, we will discuss about strategies on how to deal with uncertainty in investing. One last thing, in the description you can find a super special bonus, the first ever shareholder letter inspired by none other than Warren Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway. I hope you like it and I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about it. This month I had little to no activity. I accumulated a little bit more altcoins. The main thesis being that first the main coins will rise like Bitcoin and ETH, but later in the cycle the alt slash shite coins will rise as well, but this is pure gambling on my part. And of course, as you can see, there was no selling this month either, as it should be following my investment principles. To plug it again, please don't forget to read the 2024 shareholder letter and let me know what you think about it. In terms of cash flow, I had just one super super low dividend, the quarterly S&P 500 Q1 dividend. At the end of the third month, the portfolio as of April 1st, 2024, no April Fool's joke, looks like this. Pause the video if you want to analyze each investment in detail, but more or less, they are the same as last month, just the allocation is different depending if and how much they increased in price. No new additions and the overall portfolio's return this month was 2.6%, the second best single monthly return since I started investing in 2009 and in the past two months there were the second and third best investment months ever. That being said, here today the portfolio is up 5.34%. That being said, the current pyramid allocation portfolio looks something like this. You can see the increase in asymmetric risk reward assets, which right now is only crypto, that again mostly drove the portfolio return this month, but value stocks and commodities in my case only gold, also increased significantly this month, so despite a poor cash flow month, I am very happy with the results. Also, spoiler alert, the company started proposing the dividends for last year, which are significant, even though they are slightly lower than those of 2023. But I can complain. Wink, wink. Before going to the next section, if you are interested and only if you are interested in the subject matter, you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps bringing this completely free information to more and more people. In today's bonus section, we discuss about strategies on how to deal with the biggest problem in investing, uncertainty. How do you know if the stock that you just bought will go up or if the inverse Kramer effect is real and because Jim recommended last night on TV, it will invariably go down. To not clickbait you, there is no easy answer, but there are a set of rules that increase your chances of being correct. Nassim Taleb's book called Incerto is a masterpiece on explaining randomness and how to deal with it and one of my favorite investing books of all time. Very likely the favorite and the one that really kick-started my interest in full-time investing. The book has five volumes which are somewhat related. Full by Randomness, The Black Swan, The Bed of Procrustes, which is a book of mostly philosophical quotes, Anti-Fragile and Skin in the Game. One of the main ideas from the book is that the future is not zero or 100% certain, but rather a probability of different events happening. If you are interested, you can also watch the video about alternate history in the description, but the conclusion is that you personally cannot predict the future as a reliable strategy. And really nobody else can, and great investors like Warren Buffett and Howard Marks agree. You might do it once, you might do it twice, but at some point you will fail and you will fail big. Because of that fact, in a decision that entails ruin, if things go wrong, benefits can never offset the risk of ruin. 
An example will be Russian roulette. So the first advice is make sure you will not go bust whatever happens. YOLO is for somewhere else, not when you are investing. I have to say that I love this book so much that I bought the hardcover deluxe edition after I already read them twice on my Kindle. Even though it should already be clear, I have to say this is not sponsored. I wish it was, but it isn't. Anyways, if the topic seems interesting, this is the Amazon link. I can't recommend it high enough. As a funny unrelated story, when I ordered the book and came through customs, I got a message saying that the package said book and there were actually five books in it, so what is going on? I told them, dude, it's one book, five volumes. I feel like I was Pablo Escobar or something. Anyway, now let's delve into some of the main takeaways. We kind of know that we cannot really predict with accuracy anything of importance, so what do we do? Understanding why we can't might help us a lot. One reason we cannot predict objectively is that we always find an explanation after the fact. For example, Bloomberg reported in 2006 that Saddam Hussein was killed and at 1 p.m. bond prices went up on news of the dictator's day, quote unquote, and at 1.05, so five minutes later, the prices went down with the message rising instability concerns in the region. So basically we had the same news, but two completely different outcomes for the same asset in less than five minutes. So was the first explanation really two? Are any of them? Second, if an event never happened before, it doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. We can see a million white swans, but a single black one in Australia invalidates the theory that all swans are white. In order to make a good decision, you need to focus on the consequences which is something knowable, rather than the probabilities, which truly is unknowable. Data, which by definition is only past data, is not giving you the full picture. As a side note, that's why technical analysis in isolation can never work reliably. Third, there is a quote from the Bed of Procuses uh, book that I love, that the three most harmful addictions are heroin, carbohydrates, and the monthly salary. Unforeseen negative or contrarian events should make you stronger, not kill you. This is the core of the anti-fragile book. Try to benefit from asymmetric risk rewards by betting relatively small sums of money on improbable events that can win you big. Like for example, have 85 to 90% in ultra safe investments like government bonds and 10% in ultra risky investments like crypto or startups. And last but not least, no consequences to our actions will invariably lead to abuse. Don't listen to people that gain from a prediction, but don't lose from it when they are wrong. Like brokers, TV talking heads, not even random YouTube channels. Wink, wink. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and got a new way to look at uncertainty. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Most people that watch these videos are not yet subscribed, so not sure what you're waiting for since the price will never be cheaper. See you next month. Bye-bye.